4.5, solving related rate problems. The top of a 10-foot ladder is sliding up a vertical wall at a constant rate of 2 feet per second. When the bottom of the ladder is 6 feet from the wall, what is the rate of change of the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall? Now, with related rates, I would highly recommend drawing pictures. What you want to realize here is you have this ladder against the wall, and this ladder is 10 foot long. It's not going to change its length. And do you understand you're pushing up the ladders going up the wall, where if you push the ladder towards the wall, if it's going up the wall, doesn't that also mean the bottom's going towards the wall? Let's think about that for a second. If you push this ladder towards the wall, won't the top go up the wall? And that's the story. So now we got to read the question and see what these numbers represent. Two feet per second. That's going up the wall. So what that means is, I'm going to call, this is a right angle. Are you okay? We're going to call this side Y and this side X. X and Y axis. So wouldn't dy dx be 2 feet per second? According to the problem, isn't it going up at 2 feet per second? So isn't that dy dx, the rate of change of y in respect to time? Let's keep looking. Now I have the 6 feet. The bottom is 6 feet from the wall. So if I say the bottom is 6 feet from the wall, can I say the x is 6? Could I say that x is 6? So it's six feet from the wall, and that's always going up at two feet per second. How you push it, it's always going up at two feet per second. All right, so I have some information. And the question is asking for the rate of change of the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall. So what it's asking for is dx dt. The question is asking for dx dt. It wants to know the rate of this yellow, this yellow arrow, how fast the bottom's going towards, which is dx dt. So that's my question. That is my final answer. I am looking for this right here, and that answer will be in feet per second. So that is our goal, but we have to first find our goal. So how do we do that? Well, here's what makes related rates complicated. When the equation's not given, you have to make it. So I have a right triangle with right triangle. So what I'm going to use for this particular type of problem is Pythagorean theorem. Are you okay that Pythagorean theorem would be x squared plus y squared equals the 10 squared because the 10 is the hypotenuse? There's your equation. Now, but the problem's a related rate, so I'm going to take the derivative of this equation in respect to time. So when I take the derivative in respect to time, won't that be 2x times dx dt? Okay, because the derivative of this is 2x, and the derivative of x is dx dt plus 2y times dy dt. And won't that be equal to 100? The derivative of 100, or 10 squared, is just going to be 0. So if I take the derivative of this implicitly, don't I get this and this in respect to time? So could I simply take the values and start plugging them in? Yeah, watch what happens. When I start taking my values and plugging them in, Okay, let's see what we get here. X, we had X is 6. Didn't we say that X was 6? DX DT, that's what we want to find out. Isn't that my question mark? Isn't DX DT what I'm trying to find? Times 2 times, I don't know why. Okay, I don't know why, but I'm going to get it here in a second. DY DT, we know is 2. Now, you might wonder, where did I get that? Well, isn't DY DT 2? Doesn't we say it right here? Doesn't X equal 6 and DY DT is 2? So all I need here is y, and could I solve for dx dt? If I know what y is, could I solve for dx dt, which we're trying to find? So how do you find y? Well, could you go back to this equation and plug 6 back in? So if x is 6, could you go back to this equation and solve it? Watch. Yeah, you can. So if I put 6 back in, so 6 squared plus y squared equals 100. I got 100 because 10 squared is 100. This would be 36. So if I minus 36 from both sides, won't that give me y squared equals 64? And if I square root both sides, won't that give me y equals plus or minus 8? Now, plus or minus 8, negative 8 doesn't make any sense. So could I just assume, let's just go with it's going to be 8. So can I say that's going to be 8? 
When this is 6, won't that have to be 8 if that's 100? I'm sorry, if that's 10. So I now know all the sides, so I can actually go back and put the 8 for y. So I know 8's y, x is 6. I want to find this, and I knew that previously. So let's solve for this. So here's what it's going to end up looking like. 12 times dx dt plus uh, 2 times 8 times 2 is going to be 32 equals 0. I'm going to minus the 32 over. So I have 12 dx dt is equal to negative 32. I'm going to divide by 12, and I get dx dt is equal to negative 32 over 12. Well, 4 goes into both of those. So if 4 goes into both of those, won't that be 8 thirds? So won't that be negative 8 thirds feet per second? Now, I do want to highlight something. You might wonder, why is it negative? Well, isn't the distance of the bottom of the ladder getting smaller as you get closer to the wall? Do you see why that's negative? Negative is getting smaller. The values are getting smaller. The feet are getting smaller, so it's a negative feet per second because it's causing a decay. It's causing a decrease in foot, feet. Where here, isn't it going up? Isn't it going up, so isn't that a positive 2? Now, if I change this problem, what if I said it was going down by 2 feet per second? I'd put a negative 2 there. If the top was going down by 2 feet per second, I'd put a negative 2 there, and this would be going out, causing this answer to be a positive because this would be going out farther away, and this would be going down. So you have to be careful with wording on problems because depending on the direction and the logic of it, you have to be careful with those kind of things.